Hello, my name is Addie McConomy, and I'm a student at Florida State University. Today, I'm going to share information with you about a specific type of task analysis, upside down task analysis. Task analysis is an evidence-based practice for students with disabilities, and we can use it to provide instruction in both academic and independent living skills. A task analysis takes a chained task or something that requires a series of steps completed in a logical order and breaks them down into discrete skills. There's many advantages to this, but one of them is that it allows teachers to isolate those discrete skills that students may need additional instruction in. Those barrier skills can be taught in isolation and then added to the other tasks to create that chained task. Task analysis also provide an opportunity for step-based assessment during every instructional session. This allows us to really promote data-driven instructional decision-making. And finally, task analysis are a great way to support the fidelity of instructional implementation for teachers and other people who provide instruction to students. For example, a teacher may develop a task analysis and use it to provide small group instruction. That same task analysis can be shared with a paraeducator who can use the same steps with fidelity when they're providing instruction to the small group. Most people use task analysis on a daily basis. You just might not recognize it. For example, if you make coffee to take to work, you're completing a chained task and you could easily write a task analysis for that. We don't necessarily use a written task analysis because the sequence steps are stored in our brain, but it's the same process. Developing a task analysis has really three big chunks. You have to first identify the task and the observable skills. Once you have those, you can create a logical order that the tasks need to be completed. Most teachers need to explicitly teach students how to use a task analysis. And finally, we can build in opportunities for assessment and fidelity checks into the task analysis. It is a cyclical process as the figure shows, because once the student has mastered the task through the task analysis that's being shared, certain steps might be collapsed or even expanded if necessary to make the student more independent in the task when using the task analysis. If you want more information about writing tasks, task analysis specifically, we have a new publication out in Teaching Exceptional Children. It does a great job explaining this in detail. An upside down task analysis is a specific type of task analysis that was originally discussed in David Test and Fred Spooner's work in 1996. One of the benefits of an upside down task analysis is that you are able to graph progress during each instructional session and students have the opportunity to help graph progress. Now, instead of showing you one, I thought we'd go ahead and make one together. So I'm going to share a Word document and we're going to go ahead and build an upside down task analysis right now. So in interest of time, I've went ahead and provided the steps that we're going to be using today. So our objective is to measure the length of an object rounded to the nearest whole inch. I've listed the materials here. We'll need a ruler and something that's less than 12 inches to measure. And then I've written out the six steps that would be required to complete this task. So those are right here. The next thing I'm going to do is insert a chart. Um, I'm sorry, a table. And so I am going to go ahead and take it all the way across. I'll use all 10 cells and I'll probably even add a few more. But I know that I have six steps in my table, so I'm going to make seven rows so that I have space at the bottom to record my session. And I'll go ahead and number these. The next thing I need to do is add my tasks. This is the upside down part. And this is the first thing a student will do, point to the zero end of a ruler. But it is the task that I am going to put at the bottom of my upside down task analysis. And that's because it's the first step the student will complete. I can go ahead and continue to paste these in. But again, in the interest of time, I went ahead and prepared one for us that has been sort of formatted and, and um, all the information's in there. You'll see I also went ahead and extended it to include 14 sessions, which would represent two instructional weeks for a student. So now that we have our task analysis in an upside down format, meaning the first step is at the bottom and the last step is at the top, we can go ahead and use this. 
um, if I was working with a student in an instructional session, I would have them shade in or color using a marker or a highlighter when they completed a step independently correct. Um, for the interest of this demonstration, I'm actually going to use the shading feature in Microsoft Word. So if I was working with a student and they completed this step correctly, pointing to the zero end of the ruler, they would shade that in. And maybe during the first instructional session, the only other step that the student does independently correct is this top one adding the inch um, to the as a label. So this tells me that during the first instructional session, the student completed two steps independently correct. So I would ask them to use a star or some or their icon, maybe even a sticker, to indicate that they got two steps correct. So I'm putting that indicator here at the second step. It's not indicating that they got this step correct, just showing us that in this instructional session, they mastered independently two parts of the task analysis. So maybe during the next session, they um, point to the end of the ruler, and they're also able to point to the end of the object and they're able to write down inch. Now in this instructional session, they've mastered three steps independently correct. So I'm going to ask them to put that star at the third mark. During this fourth session, maybe they got that first step right. They also got this step. This time they wrote the number. In addition to that, they filled in inches. So now they've got four steps correct. So I'm going to ask them to add a star to that fourth line. Okay, and the process would continue. It's also important because you are building at this point a graph that you encourage the students to mark that with a line. So I would have my students fill in, again, with just a pencil or a marker, um, graph their progress. Okay, so we're gonna switch back over to the PowerPoint. And then I want to show you an example here of that exact same task analysis, just a little bit more complete. I added numbers down the side so that it would be a little more user friendly to people who um, weren't part of the instructional session. And I built it out a little bit more. You can see here, because the student reached mastery three times in a row, we stopped this instructional trial. This is one of the benefits of an upside down task analysis. We can make data driven decisions right after each instructional session, right? So after that 10th session where I see they reach mastery three times in a row, I can change my objective or my goal for this student. In addition to that, it allows us to easily identify areas where the student might need more support. For example, in this fictional data, we see here that this student had four instructional sessions where they were not able to place their finger at the end of the object. So in that example, I would provide discrete trial training for that specific task in order to support the student to master that task and not allow it to be a barrier to completing the entire chained task. In addition to that, we could use another symbol, maybe an X to indicate where the teacher was making fidelity errors. So I've put an X in to represent places where the teacher forgot to explicitly prompt the student to complete this step. Now in this example, we can see that it didn't impact the student's performance because they were still independently mastering those steps, even without the teacher's explicit reminder. If you want more information specific to upside down task analysis, we have a publication in the DAD newsletter um, unique to upside down task analysis. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. I would be happy to correspond with you. Thank you for your time.